Dry yeast. To hydrate or not to hydrate? That is the question of the day. Um, I kind of laugh a little bit because this is such a heated topic anywhere, um, online, in person, uh, homebrew stores, um, people are really, really seriously adamant about one way or the other. Uh, and I was as well, actually. Uh, you know, when I first started getting this, this whole brewing thing uh, as a profession, um, I basically bought, you know, as many uh, Brewers Association publications as I could. And every single one of them pointed towards hydration, talking about a 50% uh, loss in viability, uh, poor yeast health when it comes to successive generations, um, stalled fermentation, uh, lower attenuation, uh, on and on and on. Um, basically like death and hellfire to your beer if you don't hydrate your yeast. But you look at the flip side of that and you talk to people and they're like, oh, I've been brewing for 30 years and, and I've never rehydrated my yeast and, and I've never had a bad beer. Uh, and, and so my response to that has been basically, well, so uh, first of all, there's another little piece of information you should know. Um, your typical White Labs uh, Y yeast backpacks have uh, approximately 100 billion cells um, uh, in the package uh, on manufacturing. Uh, now there is a short loss over time um, that's that's a different matter. Um, your dry yeast packs, um, it, it depends on the yeast, uh, but typically SO4 or SO5 from Fermentis is going to have somewhere around 200 billion cells. Um, and so you look at that and you think, okay, well, uh, these people are probably, you know, using, when they do use liquid yeast, they're probably just putting in one smack pack. Uh, not everyone makes starters. Um, so one smack pack is still, you know, somewhere around 95, 97 uh, uh, billion cells, um, and it's at its maximum vitality. Um, so what's that mean? That means that these yeasts are as healthy as they possibly can be, full reserves, ready to go. Um, which means that the pitch rate can actually be a lot less uh, with really fresh yeast. Um, so, uh, you know, these dry yeast guys, well, so you're, you're taking 200 billion cells, you're pitching it into a wort, 50% uh, loss in viability means that you're going to have somewhere around 100 million cells. So essentially, it's like it's like throwing in a smack pack. It's it's essentially uh, uh, the same number of cells, give or take. Um, and so again, my response was, well, you know, of course you've never had an issue. It's because you know it, it's it's yeast that is at its peak in health, uh, and you're pitching about 100 billion cells, which is adequate for most beers. Uh, and so anyways, it, it all added up. It all made sense to me that, well, of course, you're not having issues because you're pitching the same cells as you would if you were pitching a smack pack. And because it's at its maximum in health, you're not having any fermentation problems. Uh, and you're probably not reusing that yeast uh, to, to be able to see any uh, potential issues down the road that can reoccur from it. So anyways, uh, one day I was at a brewery and I was talking to some guys um, about uh, how they brew and what they do and what their process is and, and we started talking about dry yeast and they were telling me about how they just, they just um, dump it in basically, no hydration, no nothing. Uh, and furthermore, their rep was actually saying that this is something they're focusing on, uh, even considering changing the branding to a no hydrate uh, dry yeast. So this really got me thinking, and I wanted to figure it out for myself. Uh, shortly, it was like uh, two or three months before this, I learned how to do um, uh, cell counting and uh, uh, testing for um, viability. Uh, so that's looking at how many um, how many dead cells are versus live cells. And so I, I had access to the lab, I had all the tools, um, and so I put together this experiment, and I wanted to find out what the results were gonna be. So uh, the, the gist of the experiment, you can see the full write-up in the link below. Um, but I took a, an average beer, 1045 gravity, 30 IBUs, and I split it into three different uh, uh, samples. Um, one samples, uh, one of the samples was 500 milliliters of uh, wort, um, where I pitched uh, the uh, three grams of hydrated yeast into. Uh, another was a control, which was just 500 milliliters of water. Uh, and then the third was uh, the same wort uh, in a separate uh, uh, vessel, 500 milliliters, uh, where I just basically sprinkled the same amount, uh, three grams of, of dry yeast into. Uh, and so I let them sit for a while, uh, and after an adequate amount of time, um, I basically did a cell count. Uh, and so quickly, one thing to know about rehydrating versus not rehydrating. So the, the thing about not rehydrating that um, has been stated was, 
When you pitch your yeast in dry, what happens is they don't have um, the ability to control the fluidity of the cell membrane. And so what happens is in, in those first few moments, um, basically the yeast suck in uh, you know, all these sugars and, and hop particulates, um, and it basically shreds the walls and then kills the yeast cell. So it was really quite surprising that after I did the count, uh, the non-hydrated yeast actually came back at 92%. So that's 92% of all the cells that I counted were, were alive. Um, totally contradicting uh, basically everything that I'd, I'd read in, in all of the Brewers Association books. Um, and, and mind you, I'm not saying that the data in there is, is bad, um, but it was, it was different from, from what I got. Um, so really, really quite interesting. And then uh, looking at the uh, control and the hydrated sample, uh, those actually came back both at 97% viability. So 97% of, of the cells were alive. Um, and what was uh, another interesting piece of information that I got out of that was, so this USO5 pack was, was about eight months old and it had been stored warm, uh, at least up until the point that I bought it. Um, and it was still extremely viable. Um, it was still really, really good yeast. Um, so it was really kind of interesting. And after talking to a couple people about this, uh, one of the brewers that I had talked to uh, kind of continued this study in more of a real life situation. Uh, he uh, took his dry yeast and started direct pitching it uh, without hydrating. Um, and he did cell counts um, on, on the yeast slurry after each batch. Uh, and he found something very similar. So he was finding that he was right around 92% uh, viability um, on the first generation, uh, second generation, and third generation. Uh, now he didn't pitch, repitch, excuse me, more than, than two or three times, um, but uh, still the, the data kind of lined up. Uh, dry yeast, not um, uh, hydrating it, it, it seems to work. But if we're, if we're looking at, you know, I'm, I'm pitching this yeast once, I'm not reusing it, I'm not harvesting it, uh, then I would say go for it, you know, pitch, pitch your yeast dry. Uh, especially because one of the things that I noticed was when, um, when, I, when I basically did the math backwards to figure out how many cells were in that, uh, that packet, which I weighed out to be about 11 and a half grams, uh, it actually came out to be somewhere about 263 billion cells, which is really kind of interesting because you know, we're only supposed to have around 200 billion cells. So that's 30% more yeast on top of uh, the extra 100 billion cells over your typical uh, vial or smack pack. So uh, it, it, it's, I'm, I'm definitely sold on dry yeast the more and more I look at it. Anyway, check out the full write-up for yourself. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments below. I'm, I'm definitely sold on not hydrating. Um, now one thing, I, a couple things I want to mention. Uh, again, my study did not look at uh, what happens if you uh, repeatedly use this. So you, you pitch your non-hydrated yeast uh, and then you use it uh, two, three, four, five, seven, ten generations. I also only looked at one yeast, the SO5. So there, there's, there could very well be a variance with uh, SO4 or um, uh, any of the other dry yeasts. Those are, those are other studies that I want to do as well. Um, but anyways, uh, if you like this video, like this information, um, please like and subscribe. Uh, of course, leave comments below if you have any questions. I'll do my best to uh, get everything, every one of them answered. Um, and then definitely check out the, the write-up. Uh, the link's in uh, the description below. Um, look over my methods, see what you think. And uh, I mean, try it yourself. If you've got access to these tools. Uh, it's really not very difficult to do, and it's, uh, it's actually really kind of fun. So anyways, thank you very much, and uh, here's the next one.